Hey guys, I'm Bio. I'm Sam. We're here today at Five Five Studios for sound advice. Today is beat selection. Hey, what's going on, y'all? I'm Big B.O. the Beat God. Uh, I'm a visual artist and producer here in Tampa, Florida. Born in Jacksonville, raised in Tampa, and I'm working out of Five Five Studios. I'm Sammy Hughes. I'm an MC and a visual artist. I'm the co-CEO and the creative director here at Five Five Studios. I honestly don't have a problem with tight beats. I think I, I actually love everything about the internet age of of production and beat selling. Because when I when I started making beats in like 2006, 2007 there was just sound click. And if you were late to the party, then it was really hard to get to the top of the charts and sell your beats, you know what I mean? So now you just put something up on YouTube and if somebody wants to sound like Young Dolph, then they can find a Young Dolph type beat. But then again, now that I'm thinking about it, when I'm in the studio, I'll say probably 90% of the people that come in just download a beat off of YouTube and record to it and have no clue how the business end is supposed is, to work. That is my complaint about it. I think it's too accessible. <clears throat> I think it's a great place for artists to start. Um, it's a good way to get ideas off and sharpen your swords. But at the end of the day, there's 1,300 guys who lease that same beat. Now you don't mm -hmm. have an original beat. You don't have clearances for samples and there's also a lack of intimacy or the understanding of the back end. I think it's good for those who are starting and hobbyists, but if you take it serious, you need to have a relationship with your producer. When taking the type beats off the internet, you contact the producer. Oftentimes they have sites that are set up as e-commerce. They give options so you can lease beats, you can exclusively lease beats, and you can buy the outright prices. Exclusives are solely to you for a limited amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, you can only make money to a certain point. Usually those producers have a contract set up that they receive extra percent after a certain amount of plays and streams. Um, you will not get the stems unless you buy it completely outright. I will not make a song without the stems. I suggest you don't do the same. Yeah, you could do that at beatgod.com. That's a good place to go online. It's a great place to go. When somebody asks me to recreate somebody else's beat, I feel bad for the original producer in most cases because they have no clue what's happening. But I'm. But if we're talking about money, I'm gonna. I'm gonna get the money. I'm gonna get the money, bro. You know what I mean? Because if I don't do it, somebody else is gonna do it, bro. I don't have. Get the bag, bro. I, I don't have enough integrity to turn down the money. I got an eight-month-old baby, bro. I'm not playing those kind of games. I've seen it happen a lot, and when people come in, usually if they're looking to replicate a beat, I'll send them with someone who can kind of reverse engineer it. We let them know up front it's not going to be the same beat. Right. We will just capture a similar feeling because mm -hmm. in the, the day, if you're copying someone you're copying someone and that's a problem right so we just look for the same feeling and if it's hip-hop for me it's nod first so we try to replicate a nod that is in the same pocket same tempo and then we try to capture the feeling melodies and things like that on top rather than me remaking this same exact beat bro I, you might like what i make for you better because you made a song to this beat now i'm gonna make a song to your song does that make sense Absolutely. I'm going to I'm going to build this around you because that's my job as a producer rather than me Correct. recreating something that I myself when you buy usually a, think is me. When you buy a tight beat, you're getting a beat. Mm -hmm. But when you come in and you meet have a relationship with a producer and your engineer, you're getting something tailored to a song. Yeah. That's how you make a record. Exactly. That's not how you make some rap. Absolutely. Finding a producer to work with, um, a lot of it I feel is trial and error. The best way for any business to go well is break bread first. Put some money in somebody's hands. It's a great way to start a relationship, letting them know you're here for business. Um, some of us are lucky enough to have friends who we've known forever that do it. If the relationship goes well, then the producer will be your friend. As an artist, you cannot make music without the producer. And I, people need to remember to give them their credit. I think the tricky thing about finding a sound is that it's more than likely gonna change. I think it's a big misconception that the beat makes the artist's sound. I think it's the what the vocalist does with their cadences, their rhythms, and their tones of voice, and the approach to where the derivative of their lyrics comes from, right? And at that point, everything else is subjective. So like sound, to me, is not necessarily the type of beat. It's how you approach writing a song. Because you could put Chaz Gambino 
are in totally different type of records. Yeah, right? but rap, that's childish game. Be, Bino, I'm not trying to a hear. A great rapper has a voice and a sound. No matter what you put him on, he is still him. Push your T on a house record is the same as push your T on a. So a picture track. this: Young Jeezy and Joey Badass collab sounds like a headache to me. I don't know what kind of beat to even imagine. I That's what I'm saying. I, I don't want to hear Joey Badass on Shawty Red, and I don't want to hear Jeezy on Prem beats. So it's, I think I think the producer has a lot to do with capturing a certain sound because I have to make that sound before you even get a chance to open the door to the booth. Before you ever hear the beat, I have to capture this sound that I know you're going to like. I think, I think it's um, case by case. I think everyone's slightly different. I think the greats have a voice. Jay-Z is still Jay-Z on a Coldplay record. Yeah, but not on a Jeezy record. Not on the Jeezy record. I mean, Jeezy, that's my point. Jeezy is Jeezy, bro. Jeezy has to have horns and, and but, a certain. But that's what I'm saying. Jay, they got a few. They got a bunch of records together, and I don't. I don't want to hear none of them. It is a three-part deal. It is the producer, the engineer, and the artist. Engineer, don't even get me started because none of them get their credit. And if you ask me, they are the sound cultivators for Sonics. And. Oftentimes, producers are left aside because they don't understand the back end. So get your BMI, get your ASCAP, understand what your publishing is, and make sure you're safe because, unfortunately, history shows that if they can screw you, they're going to screw you as a producer. So make sure you got your shit in order. Yeah, I agree. I don't, I don't think I have... I think... So my, my issue with DJ Quick is I would have to ask him why he wasn't getting his credit. You know what I mean? Because there are plenty of other producers in that same era that were getting credit. Why weren't you getting credit? You specifically. I can only assume like here I have a problem with I have a problem when people sign contracts and then cry victim. No, it, what happened with him is it's that people did things and did not keep him in the room for the contracts. That happens oftentimes, right? Like if I got a beat from you and we never handled the back end and my song blew up, it's going to be a fairly difficult for you to be able to go back and get the publishing from the same record. Like right. you gotta have bread to take me to court and fight me for your publishing. So you know me, how many times do you think I'm gonna let that happen? Never, but a lot of people do. If it happened to me, and how many times do you think I'm gonna allow that to happen? But you're also big for nothing. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying. <laughs> like a little producer in a room with a Titan, right? Like some kind of massive artist. Mm -hmm. He just wants to make sure he's on his beat. Mm -hmm. How does he, leverage himself in that room, in a room that they could just tell him to walk out of to ensure that he gets his publishing. But my point it's is so, this, if, if I'm leverage. not getting credit, what is the point of you getting on this beat? If Jay-Z's like, yeah, bro, I'm gonna do this beat, but you can't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna record on this beat, but you can't tell nobody okay. that, that you made it. How many times have you been in a session when we have an artist who continuously gets people flooding their emails with beats, right? They mm -hmm. go take one of their beats out of the email because those eager and hungry artists send beats hoping that someone will make a record on that beat. That artist makes that beat, if that song takes off online, that person who sent him that beat ain't getting anything unless he has money to fight him on the back end. Right. Make sure you fill your potholes in and get the foundation down first because bring your split sheets to the session. It's simple as that. You can go online and print out a generic boilerplate version of a split sheet, get your publishing right. Simple as that. I think that it should be a standard. And if anybody has a, needs it, holler at me. Find me online, I'll send you a split sheet. Man, you got me, you got me messed up if you think that's gonna happen to me it enough times for me to, to make you. a three minute long video listing all of the songs that I got robbed on. There's no way. Three times tops. Three times absolute maximum. Both people's equal responsibility to ensure that they get what they deserve. It's still a negotiation at the end of the day, so you're gonna try to get as much as you can out of it, but it comes to a moral place as well where you do not want to do bad business. And then when it comes to clearing a sample, that is the artist's job. Everything post the song being made is the artist's responsibility. The producer's job is to produce the record, period. Hope you guys enjoyed watching us and uh, I hope you have a great day. Hope you and, learned something. Yeah, and you learn something and you just stay positive and you create something today.